Hi there, good evening everyone and welcome to the Thomas Logray Lecture. Uh, this is the uh, Institution of Mechanical Engineers, Power Industries Division's Prestige Annual Lecture. Um, this is a little bit different for us. Normally I'd be welcoming you to Birdcage Walk and uh, we'd be doing this in person. I would need to be reminding you about fire exits. Tonight we're doing it online, so um, I more need to remind you that any questions that you might have, can you please submit them versus the question and answer box on your screens. Uh, this box can also be used to let us know if you're having any technical issues. And uh, if you are, then we'll do our best if, if we can to resolve those. Uh, we'll be allocating some time after the lecture to answer as many questions as we can. So uh, please make sure that uh, you get your questions in early uh, to be sure of being covered. Uh, tonight, uh, we'll be discussing uh, Morecambe Bay and a case study on a tidal range project in the UK uh, one where we have one of the best tidal resources in the world. Currently, uh, the projects under development have, um, have, have got about 10 gigawatts worth of capacity, could deliver over 20 terawatt hours per year, and uh, that's about 5% of the UK's energy use, with the potential to, um, to increase to, to two or three times that with other tidal range sites. Our speaker tonight is uh, Professor George Agadis, who's Head of Energy Engineering at Lancaster University. He has um, had a long and, uh, and, and an illustrious career, uh, 25 years of industrial and academic experience, some of it abroad, um, engineering with uh, companies like Mather & Platt, uh, Director of Engineering and Development Manager for Fluid Machinery and, Hydro and Hydropower UK at Gilks. And uh, he's got research design development and patent contributions in the field of fluid machinery and renewable energy and has developed turbines for hydropower generation projects and done physical research projects for fluid machinery successfully worldwide. He's now leading the water renewables research activities of the engineering department at Lancaster University and I'm very much looking forward to hearing what he has to say tonight, this evening. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Professor Agadis uh, just now, George, uh, take it away, please. And uh, very much looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Good. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear my? Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can have a signal from anybody. Yeah, we can hear you, George. Lovely. Thank you very much. Then uh, I can start. So, uh, Grant, uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And I would like to thank uh, uh, the IMAQ and its uh, uh, Power Industries uh, Division for uh, the kind invitation to present uh, the Thomas uh, Logray Lecture for 2022 and also for asking me to focus on the, this Pacific title, uh, Mokan Bay uh, title barrage. So, over the next 40 minutes, I will uh, cover this lecture and I'll uh, go through introduction, resource, past, present, next steps, which is the technical part, and uh, uh, then uh, draw some conclusions. As an introduction, you can see here uh, the panoramic view of uh, Morgan Bay, uh, right uh, at uh, the left hand end is where Lancaster University is and you can see at one end of it uh, the uh, Haysom and across on the other side Barrow and uh, Walney Island, Great of the Sands, it's down there. So, uh, energy prices are high and putting pressure on households and businesses, and we face it today, uh, all of us. In the short term, there is no easy fix. Uh, but tidal range power offers the UK a level of independence 
from global prices and in the long term cheap clean power uh, looking at uk policy the uk government has multiple policy commitments and that includes leveling up environmental protection social health and economic security its policy makes calls on public funding that must be effectively prioritized. Baras delivers several targets and eventually pays for itself and makes a profit. Engineering is offering a solution to multiple problems that the government and the world are facing in terms of environmental protection and safeguarding our future. The obvious question here for the UK, is, which has one of the best tidal resources globally, is why haven't we already got the tidal scheme barrels? In the past, the idea of environmental protection worked against large infrastructure. We can remember in the past, for instance, Baroness Young, the then uh, CEO of the Environment Agency, and uh, her response to the seven barras. But now, the argument is turned on its head, especially for coastal protection. And conservation can only be delivered in the short term by these schemes. They can be considered to be an arc. Economics is always... Uh, is there any noise, background noise that someone might need to uh, switch off the microphones, please? Thank you. Uh, Economics is always the point of decision-making, but uh, the Lancaster Tidal Energy Model and its cost assessment allows the potential to deliver through different schemes and management strategies to be effectively compared. Uh, the Lancaster Tidal Energy Model aims to deliver environmental engineering for an uncertain future. A simple 0D model ahead of more involved 2D and 3D and accompanying cost estimation allows what-if modeling to explore options for future development. For government, it is important that they can examine where it is best to invest to deliver their policy on a level playing field. Government's reputation is not very good at join up thinking and the Lancaster Tidal Energy Model can help. Mokan Bay has one of the best tidal resources in the world and is used here to demonstrate its potential in the UK. Other tidal range projects currently under development promise a 10 gigawatt installed capacity, delivering over 20 terawatt hours per year, which is about 5% of UK energy use. The resource is predictable, circumventing issues of intermittency and storage commonly associated with renewable power. The potential for other UK tidal range projects can easily increase this value multiple times, two, three, or four. It can assist the UK to reduce its carbon emissions by replacing fossil fuel power stations. The current UK total generate capacity in the UK is uh, 42.8 gigawatts, and that includes fossil fuels at 19.2 gigawatts 
which is about 44.9%. Uh, renewables, 16.5 gigawatts, which is about 38.5%. And low carbon at 7.1 gigawatts, about 16.6%. Uh, the French Laurence Tidal Range plant today is the cheapest operating plant in uh, the Electricité de France EDF fleet. Tidal energy does not suffer from intermittency. It's highly predictable, generated both day and night, and is built for 120 years and captured at the time we need it to avoid intermittency and storage problems. Mokan Bay can deliver so much more than many other proposals, uh, including transport, innovation, links to Eden North, social benefits, load balancing, etc. Mokan Bay is globally recognized as a unique environmental asset with a large area of intertidal mudflats that support significant populations of wading birds. Government has accepted responsibility to protect and maintain this status through uh, the Ramsar, SPA, SAC, SSI, AONB, and several other designations. Each of these designations is put at risk through sea level rise. Government intervention is needed to deliver the safeguards they have agreed. Historically, environmental protection constrained development. Now, the valuable habitats will be lost without it. A tidal barrage will allow the current tidal range to be maintained within its existing boundaries, protecting the hinterland from both tidal and riverine flooding. The operation of the barrage would involve the guidance by the conservation agencies, that could include the environmental, oh, Environment Agency, Natural England, Marine Management Organizations, and so on but will still pay for itself in sustainable power. The Lancaster Tidal Energy model provides an initial assessment comparison, selected locations operating under specific management objectives and regimes, and using a cascade approach to decision making uh, needs more detailed 2D and 3D modeling, but uh, the like I said, that energy model is an essential first step. So we need to take action now. We all had net zero by 2050 every day on the news. So the UK government had announced a climate emergency and targets to decarbonize by 2050. Of course, we need to achieve that sooner than 2050 if uh, we want to avoid the catastrophic effects that we begin to see of climate breakdown both across the globe and here in the UK. We just have a short window of opportunity left to avoid irre irreversible damage. We definitely need to live greener and more sustainable lives. We need to reduce the UK dependence on imports of dirty fuels, coal, oil and gas. The UK should be powered by a homegrown renewable sector that will provide jobs, clean energy and affordable prices for homes, heating, transport and industry. Yeah, McKee a few years ago had asked me to do a similar presentation on the tidal rains. Uh, and uh, I was just reflecting what has changed from two, three years ago to today. Looking at turbines, 
they are largely the same. Perhaps we have made a few steps forward towards uh, two-way generation, triple regulation, fish-friendly uh, designs. On civil engineering, we are looking to novel construction techniques, floating casements, use of local materials, and improved technology for uh, concrete and reinforcement. Uh, looking at the environment, climate change is more firmly established and we need credit pressure on the need to act. And sea level rise is a major factor in the scheme, which means that development is more urgent and Baras is an environmental safeguard. Something that is developing in uh, the Northwest, just outside Lancaster University, linked with Lancaster University, also is uh, the Eden Project North. Politics. There is a new UK energy strategy. And this strategy includes nuclear with eight new reactors by 2030. Offshore wind, and the target is to generate 50 gigawatts by 2030. Oil and gas, new licensing round. Not clear what this includes. Is that fracking? Solar. Target for 14 gigawatts by 2035. Hydrogen, target 10 gigawatts production by 2030. But I don't see tidal here. Has Boris missed the bus again with the new British energy security strategy? And the frustration is growing daily. Looking at energy demand, we have reduced supply, and this is mainly to uh, the happenings in Russia and oil and gas from Russia. We have changing demand with the electric cars and heating, and increasing prices that remain high significantly and keep increasing on a daily basis. Looking at economics, we see that we have a cost of living crisis that is driven predominantly by energy prices. And the government debt due to the pandemic and COVID-19. And finally, modeling. I have a lot to tell you about that. Uh, uh, that and here you can see uh, Lancaster University, where we do carry out most of the work. And you can see the model of uh, uh, The triple regulated uh, suggestion from Andres and uh, G for tidal range projects. Since uh, 2020, because of uh, its significance and agency, the British Hydropower Association developed the Tidal Range Alliance under its umbrella. Uh, the first uh, chairman was Henry Dixon, and the current cha chairman is uh, Johan Jenkins, with a mission to promote the multidisciplinary features and benefits of tidal range projects to key stakeholders across government, industry, and the media. Looking at the resource, it's all 
due to the gravitational fields of the Earth, the Moon and the Sun. As long as the Earth, the Moon and the Sun uh, continue on their orbits, we will have this excellent tidal resource on Earth. And uh, we can calculate for days or years, thousands of years in the past, or the same in the future. Completely predictable. Looking at uh, the tidal energy resource globally, we can see that uh, uh, we are very lucky from that point of view because the UK has significant tidal resource. Obviously, the largest is in, in the Bay of Fundy in Canada. But we can see other areas uh, around the globe, including Latin America, Australia, India, uh, China, Korea, and uh, Russia, where uh, there are opportunities for tidal range energy projects. And focusing in the UK, we can see that the majority of the tidal range resource in the UK is on the west coast of the UK. And perhaps half of it is on the Severn Estuary, and the remaining half is on the northwest, just around Lancaster University, starting from North Wales at the lower end and finishing at, uh, in Scotland at uh, the Solway Firth. Looking at the past for Mogan Bay, uh, just to give you a very, very quick uh, update. Uh, back in 1837, George Stevenson uh, proposed the West Coast Railway to pass over Mogan Bay. In 1857, the Lancaster to Grange over Sands Railway Bridge uh, went across the bay. Uh, in the 60s, there was a Manchester engineer, Ernest Liming, that uh, was proposing a Mokan Bay uh, barrage. Uh, in 2002, a civil engineer from Kendall uh, made some proposal, his proposals at Westmoreland Gazette. Uh, in 2004, we have David Brockbank that uh, uh, he discussed with uh, uh, Martin Witt and myself, the Blue Energy Tidal Fence. This is Tidal Stream devices. Then uh, we discussed uh, with uh, Professor Steven Solder and uh, David the Theta Islands. And then David developed the bridge across the bay uh, idea. Uh, in 2008, the Northwest Tidal Energy Group uh, was launched at Lancaster University and I was the founding chairman. In 2010, Nigel Catterson and Peter Roberts uh, proposed the getaway uh, using the technology of uh, Peter, Peter Roberts. Uh, Alan Tovel, myself and the Northwest uh, business leadership team uh, produced the Northwest Energy Squared model that was uh, presented at the Liverpool exhibition in uh, uh, 2014. Uh, an architect from uh, Lancaster, Mokeli, uh, proposed the Tidal Barrage and the Northwest Tidal Energy Alliance in 2015. And believe it or not, uh, I was an advisor in 2018 for a theatrical production that was presented at the Duke's Theatre at Lancaster with a light, with the title Keeping the Lights On and Morgan Bay Tidal Barras was part of it. Now, looking at uh, the global references on tidal range, uh, we can see that uh, in the 60s, 67, uh, we have the Laurence project in France, uh, 68, the Kislaya Guba in Russia. Uh, in uh, 1980, uh, the Annapolis project in Canada at the Bay of Fundy. 
uh, the highest tidal range on the world, 16.2 meters. Then uh, the Xiangxia in uh, China, a series of small projects. And the latest one is uh, the largest and newest, the Siwa project in South Korea in 2011. Uh, this is the Siwa project. Uh, it has uh, Andritz Hydro technology and the man in charge of the project is uh, Markus Nimberger, uh, the current uh, global hydro vice president for engineering and R&D uh, based in Linz in Austria. Looking at present, we have a range of technologies at our arsenal to progress with uh, tidal energy, both uh, range and uh, current tidal stream. At the left hand side, we can see the ball turbines that uh, can uh, operate at uh, efficiencies beyond 90%. At the other extreme, on the right-hand side, we can see the open stream tidal current turbines. They are restricted by the batch limit, so they could easily uh, reach about 47%. And something in between, like this Rolls-Royce proposal of uh, contra-rotating uh, turbines somewhere in between. So you can see an increasing environmental impact going from left, from right to left. Uh, and uh, decreasing power density going from left to right. These projects are multifunctional infrastructural projects and power generation. Up to now, we were looking only on power generation, but really uh, there are other benefits uh, that surround it, from flood risk, transport, tourism, job creation, and so on. So now we can see that uh, we can protect the local landscape from flooding, both terrestrial and marine, provide skilled jobs in a long-term industry, offer improved transport for the coastal settlements, create new attractive landscape features, and tourism, deliver power when it's needed and the potential for new energy storage facilities and that's both lagoons and also reservoirs and of course paying for itself through power generation in 2017 uh, we uh, came up with uh, the triple uh, regulation turbines and this is under uh, hydro and uh, GE as part of the Swansea uh, Bay Lagoon uh, developments. Uh, up to that time, we had uh, just double regulation. So we had uh, guide vanes and blades uh, adjustment. Now uh, we can uh, change frequency uh, and speed continuously to follow uh, the variations on head and flow which means uh, we can move the best efficiency point of the performance of the turbine continuously. Uh, so we end up with uh, a flat efficiency characteristic. Uh, using this kind of turbines uh, and uh, uh, in this way, just uh, discussing uh, with uh, uh, the people that have done modeling on that, uh, we can see a significant increase on annual generated power that is translated into significant increase on annual generated revenue. And here discussing with uh, the global vice president of uh, Andritz Hydro, Berg-Hiderland that is based at Ravensberg in Germany. 
uh, back in 2017, again, because of uh, the Swansea Bay Lagoon project, we looked at uh, industrial opportunities to develop these turbines. And Andritz Hydro uh, and G and Tidal Lagoon Power were involved. And uh, there were a lot of discussions uh, taking place with uh, Westminster to progress in this way. And uh, eventually, I was at Ravensburg at the time when uh, this was developed at the first instance. And you can see uh, the opportunities that uh, uh, wait for the UK industry. Uh, for Mokan Bay and Dutton barrages, NTPG was uh, progressing with this opportunity and uh, my good friend, the late Alan Torvel, was very strong behind it. Uh, and included a proposal that uh, from uh, Haysom to Barrow carrying a lot of things through it, plus a road connection uh, at both ends. Looking at the next steps and what is happening technically now, uh, there are a number of universities in the UK that uh, carry out a lot of research in this area. Uh, this is where the research takes place at Lancaster University, where we, uh, we work on renewable energy and fluid machinery, both generic and applied research. We are looking into all aspects of energy and renewables, and obviously novel topology fluid machinery and turbines, funded by EPSRC, Carbon Trust, EU, RDAs, utilities and industry. Uh, now, looking at the work we carry out at Lancaster, uh, you can see some of the outputs. Uh, we have, uh, you can see here that we have three different curves here. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, at the top, we had uh, the head produced in meters uh, over time. And you can see uh, the tide, the head, and what is happening in the barrage. The same in the middle one on flow in cubic meters per second. Uh, and multiplying head and flow, uh, we end up with uh, uh, power in gigawatts. And you can see the energy produced uh, during ebb and flood and also ability for pumping. So when, for instance, Larance was built in the beginning, uh, it was built for ebb and flood and pumping uh, operation and throughout its long operation they were able to adjust accordingly as the need and societal need and requirements were changing. Now, pumping is very interesting here because it can help us for environmental reasons and climate emergency. Now, uh, the model can fit into all sorts of decisions and can be upgraded to 2D or 3D and can do even more. At Lancaster University, we currently carry out some of this work. And looking at the funding, we can see that these projects are spin towards the climate change and greenhouse gas reduction. Uh, we can look at the number of turbines that uh, we need uh, and uh, the output in annual energy production. Uh, the number of turbines is dictated by cost, space, flow, velocity, power and energy generation, future proofing, 
sea level rise, I'll mention about that, and environment, maybe tide matching. And we have here the blue line with uh, annual energy, energy power, uh, production with the current sea level, the orange one with uh, an increase of 1.2 meters in sea level rise, and the equivalent theoretical dotted lines, blue uh, current sea level and orange the uh, 1.2 sea level rise. Back at the end of uh, 2019, the uh, Institution of Mechanical Engineers uh, produced this uh, report, Rising Seas, the Engineering Challenge. Uh, and uh, the water level of project sea level rise continuously changing, and we can see that it's generally moving upwards. So the recommendation from the Institution of Mechanical Engineers was prepare for a minimum of a one meter rise in sea level this century, but plan for three meters of rise. And that's significant. And last by, but by no means least, the impact on the environment. The map is showing the extent of the tidal zone and the number of cycles experienced over a year. And how will this impact the ecology? Depends how quickly it happens. And in the tidal area, lost without letting the estuary take over the low-lying land. Uh, we can see here the importance of change, changes in sea level rise, potential energy increases, greater head, possibly larger impoundment volume, protecting the designated sites, and the government is committed to do this. Makes the scheme a no-brainer. Possible to match tides to current levels, but at cost, if we use more turbines, and lower net power generation. But the losses are not enormous. In light of uh, projected sea level rise, tidal range, uh, barrage across the Morgan Bay offers the added benefits of protecting both the environment from rapid changes and the low-lying land around the bay to an increased risk of flooding. Confined reflects the existing flood prevention schemes and here we used 10 meters because it was uh, a number to produce the map but is relevant as we can discuss at a later slide and here you can see Levens and Kent estuaries and the land area affected uh, the red one is uh, just limited extent of uh, 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 LIDAR data. Uh, long stretches of embankment that are susceptible to sea level rise, you can see here, what level of protection. Uh, the value of land may seem low, but the map shows here the Mythop Moss, an international biological program site. Uh, river flooding is a major problem at the moment and is likely to get worse. Higher sea level will make the likelihood and severity worse by blocking the drainage to the sea, i.e. we need a barrage. Pictures like this are every year commonplace now associated with Mokham Bay. Shocking, but they become more frequent. If we didn't have any barrage and no intervention at all, obviously nature will take its course. This is Morgan Bay in 2004. That has changed in 2011, changed again in 2014, and changed again in 2018. That's nature taking its course. 
Is the environment better protected with the barrage? That's a very good question here. Looking at revenue and half hourly wholesale system sale price, uh, we can see that prior to 2021, the average wholesale price of electricity was around 45 uh, pounds per megawatt hour. The rapid rise in 2021 has been explained as the post-COVID demand increase. And due to the war in Ukraine, currently, uh, the 2022 price average price is 185 pounds per megawatt hour and to put this into perspective uh the Sonji bay tidal range scheme was looking for a cfd of 95 pounds per megawatt hour uh, so at based on the work we're doing at lancaster University, we suggest further research and modeling to optimize and balance the requirements of climate change, environment and energy generation, energy storage and grid supply against energy demand. In addition to the triple regulation and modeling accuracy, going from 0D, 2D and 3D. Because of climate change, uh, more pumps are required to successfully maintain the environmental status uh, sea level rise and mitigate serious flooding. Due to the proposed recommendations by the Benion report in 2019 at its status as a highly protected marine area, Bokan Bay is now an unlikely location in Northwest England for a power only project. We have welcomed this report and helped us further develop the holistic benefits of Bokan Bay tidal barrage project. And also, uh, we uh, have established links with uh, the Eden North project that is uh, very closely affiliated to Lancaster University, a unique and ambitious project that seeks to reimagine the seaside resort for the 21st century and has far-reaching environmental, social and economic ambitions. Here you can see the project right next to the Midland Hotel in Mokham. And finally, to draw some conclusions, looking at the benefits today, we have opportunity to establish a British lead in the sector, protecting the local landscape and habitats from flooding, both terrestrial and marine. Provide skilled jobs in a long-term industry offer improved transport for the coastal settlements, create new attractive landscape features and tourism, deliver power when it's needed, and the potential for new energy storage facilities, lagoons and onshore reservoirs, and of course, paying for itself through power generation. Now, potential beyond Mokan Bay, we can see a network of tidal energy sites along the west coast of Great Britain. Protection for flooding and sea level rise, delivering distributed power along the west coast, improved transfer links with some schemes, reduce reliance on foreign uh, fossil fuels, and again, funded through power generation. And my last slide on conclusions, our primary focus really should be on health, well-being, green jobs and environment dictated by the climate emergency. This is why we need to build a Mokan Bay tidal barrage. All UK estuaries will be seeing exactly the same pressures for rising sea level. Therefore, a barrage across the bay is now essential. And the secondary focus we can have energy, storage, and grid. Thank you very much for listening.
Hello, I'm David Ball, the chairman of the Power Industries Division, Northwest Centre of the IMACE, and I'm going to ask the first question. Regarding the amount of power that can be generated from uh, schemes such as Morecambe Bay, if there was a barrier barrage across every suitable estuary around the UK, including Scotland, England, of course, Wales and Northern Ireland, how much electricity could be generated? Number one. And number two, what percentage of the current electricity being generated from fossil fuels would this represent? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh... Thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, on the first question, uh, the projects that are being uh, developed today uh, are, uh, as I said, uh, on 10 megawatts, uh, 10 gigawatts. And uh, this is uh, uh, a significant amount. Yeah. Uh, that uh, delivers uh, 20 terawatt hours per year, and this is about 5% of UK energy use. Now, if uh, uh, we want to cover all the available resource uh, here in the UK, uh, uh, the potential, as I said, would double, triple, or quadruple. And uh, uh, there were studies that were made that could, could easily cover 45 gigawatts. And really, this is more than 20-25% uh, of UK energy use. Uh, fossil fuels today are at 19.2 gigawatts, which is about 50% of uh, what uh, we're using. So really, we can easily cover that with uh, uh, tidal energy that is a uh, UK resource under our own control and we do not need to import it from any friendly or unfriendly nations. And uh, uh, the, the percentage uh, would cover really the UK total uh, generated capacity today is uh, 42.8 gigawatts. So depending on how far we take it, we can cover a significant amount of uh, the uh, requirements and demand here in the UK with uh, an infrastructure that is uh, uh, designed for 120 years, long-term infrastructure, rather than, uh, 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 let's say, other power projects that, uh, let's say, nuclear, perhaps it's half of that, and uh, uh, wind and solar could be uh, much less than that as well, as we design them today. Uh, your, so I think I have answered both your question uh, on uh, total uh, generation in the UK and also in percentages. Are you happy with that or is there something? No, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, George. Thank you. Thanks, George. I'm um, going to jump in. Apologies, I was um, I struggled with the technology to uh, unmute myself and put my camera on earlier. So thanks for for <laughs> jumping in with the first question, David. Appreciate it. Um, got quite a number of um, questions that have been put in on online, George. So um, I'm going to try and group them. Um, uh, there's, there's there's quite a lot of questions from uh, multiple questions from the same people as well. So uh, I think the first one, um, someone's asked, how different is the scheme that you're talking about from Markham Bay from the one in the 1960s? And um, are you able to say anything about the insights as to why, you know, things haven't gone ahead in the past and perhaps, uh, you know, why you might be confident 
that, that it could be different in the future. Uh, in uh, well, as I said, uh, at Morgan Bay we started with uh, the crossing first of all, and then uh, we looked into uh, uh, tidal fences that uh, were using uh, tidal stream turbines uh, that uh, they have uh, a much uh, with uh, David Brockman uh, that uh, they have uh, much lower efficiencies, uh, as I said, perhaps forty-seven percent. Uh, and uh, it was not making uh, uh, the spreadsheets balance. Uh, uh, currently, with uh, a, a tidal barrage as, or barrages that they are proposed today using uh, the current uh, technology, uh, we can uh, uh, generate uh, much more power uh, reliably uh, and it's a technology that uh, it's uh, not new it has been tried and tested uh, and uh, new is the operational mode that I said we developed as uh, triple uh, regulation uh, and uh, the reason that uh, it uh, in the past uh, why we have not developed it is that so far uh, we looked at it only as power generation project. Uh, and this is uh, important. Uh, uh, now, with uh, the climate emergency problem, and as the IMAQ says, we have a sea level rise anyway happening. Uh, 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 we might see uh, one meter by design for three meters uh, today, uh, it could really benefit the environment. So now we are looking at it as an environmental protection uh, rather than power generation. Power generation is secondary that will pay off eventually because of its longevity. Uh, this is from the technical point of view. Uh -huh. And uh, to say why it has not progressed here in the UK, although we see some other pro other countries, Norway, have developed uh, uh, their road from north to south that includes uh, tidal energy and other renewables as part of the infrastructure. We have seen projects in uh, South Korea, like uh, the Siwa project progressing, is because here in the UK, the way we see it is that we don't have a long-term vision to be bold enough and uh, spend the money for an infrastructure that is uh, for 120 years in the future, if uh, our focus is on a five, on for five years uh, term vision. So really we have to be a bit bolder and perhaps because of the climate emergency now to start looking uh, more into the benefits we could see for the UK uh, and the future generations because of the climate emergency and the situation as we see it globally now what, what is happening. We've seen the pandemic and obviously we see what is happening with uh, uh, the Russian oil and gas and obviously with the implications from what we see here in uh, the war in Ukraine currently. Okay, now that, that's really interesting. So just maybe as a supplemental question, um, one of the, the other questions that's, had, that's come in, um, they were reflecting on the environmental protection and, you know, they, they, they talk about... Um, you know, opposition from what they call the, the, the NIMBYs, you know, the not in my backyard and making a credible case to, you know, people who might be against the concept of such a project. Uh, and, and I guess the question is, um, if you're arguing on uh, economic grounds for a power project, it's one thing. If you're arguing, you know, for environmental protection, then, you, you know, given that individuals tend to try and develop individual projects, um, do you have a view on, you know, who might collectively try and, and make that case? 
uh, you know, kind of and argue for the benefits. Uh, you know, we've got you've got other projects, say in Swansea Bay, um, but they tend to be developed individually. And you know, so um, uh, what what's your opinion on the? You know, if you were going to try and lobby from an environmental perspective, just how might the uh, the groups of developers effectively do that? Um, what do you think? Uh, obviously, uh, even uh, the Severn and Swansea Bay Lagoon were power only uh, projects. Uh, looking at uh, the spreadsheet, uh, uh, what I'm proposing now uh, is because of uh, uh, what we've seen in Glasgow at the end of last year and uh, the climate emergency, the whole world came to Glasgow and in Scotland uh, at the end of last year. And uh, really the climate emergency is here with us. It's serious. We believe it, it's happening. So really we need to take some action and to protect our environment. If we do absolutely nothing, uh, you've seen some slides I showed you, nature takes its course. It will not be what we see today for our uh, children and grandchildren. So what we do here, uh, we can uh, ensure that uh, we maintain what we have today into the future. And engineering, and the answer will come from engineers at the end, uh, provides a solution. And this solution uh, could protect our environment, uh, could uh, uh, protect uh, infra existing infrastructure from sea level rising, rising that is not in place today. And then, uh, as I say, a byproduct could be the uh, power generation that could uh, benefit to pay for the project in the long term. But again, these projects need to be looked at in the way that I'm proposing it and need to be looked at centrally by the government and not just one department as it has been the case up to now, but several departments, because there is one department for power generation, another department for transportation, and another department for uh, flood protection. And all these departments spend money for the individual uh, obligations and requirements. And a joined up thinking in this way could perhaps benefit the UK in a holistic way. Sure. I'm, I'm just I'm looking conscious of time where we're due to finish at half past, but um, uh, there's quite a lot of technical questions have been asked and uh, there, there's some very specific um, sort of uh, some questions that have been asked, which uh, I, I doubt we've got time for. But uh, one that's come up twice, which um, it'd be uh, uh, it'd be quite useful to uh, to put to you uh, just as we as we look at winding up is about the potential for gradual silting up of the bay, and um, uh, there's there's a couple of people asked about that risk and um, you know whether over over uh, time that could um, that, that could threaten the project operations and, um, and to what extent you you you've thought about that. Well, all these uh, points uh, have been. Uh... Uh, taken into consideration and uh, uh, we uh, desilting is not something unusual and something that engineers can uh, uh, deal with it and tackle it. So it's not something that uh, 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 we cannot uh, uh, deal with and any other problems that we can envisage, we are engineers and we can engineer solutions around it sure okay thank you um again like i said conscious of time so um i'm just going to ask uh, david if if he would uh, kindly uh, provide a vote of thanks for for your talk which is uh, 
both been an excellent talk and also generated a lot of uh, interesting questions and apologies to uh, to those of you that, that tried to ask questions and uh, and didn't manage to have them posted to, to George. Um, I, I don't know whether it might be possible for them to follow up with you directly afterwards, but uh, in, in the meantime, uh, uh, David, please, uh, a lot of thanks. George, that was a very interesting uh, lecture that you've just delivered. Um, it was a big improvement on the last one, actually, uh, which is, that was a good one. Uh, I, I was, I'm really impressed with what you have said, uh, because I've been following the Morecambe Bay project for over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, I don't have as much knowledge as you have, but nonetheless, I've been following it, and I've been very enthusiastic. And the last major um, project was rejected. And it was rejected for environmental reason, reasons, even though the Royal Bank of Scotland have put up the full amount of money for the project because of the guaranteed returns from the national grid. Now, with these additional items, such as flooding, etc., to add to the equation, I think it could go ahead. And I hope a company is going to pick it up very soon and make it happen. George, thank you so much. It was a really interesting and educational lecture. Can we all thank George in our usual way, even though we're not together, can we? <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Um, so um, it's it's really weird not to be wishing you all safe travels home because I imagine most of you have dialed in already from home. So uh, limited traveling time, perhaps. Um, just to normally do a bit of PR for, for the, the power division. Um, so uh, uh, in terms of upcoming events, uh, if you have a look on our website, you can see what's planned. Um, just trying to cover the the range of what we do. There's a, a webinar uh, due to take place in, uh, in a couple of months time with the Renewables um, Committee. And uh, we've also got a couple of um, uh, events, uh, seminars and conferences taking place later in the year. One with our, our Nuclear Committee on Nuclear Lifting and uh, one with our Thermal Committee um, with their Heat Recovery Steam Generator User Group. So. Um, if you um, if any of these these topics and and others uh, on our website would have been interest to you then please uh, uh, in, engage there and you can find out more uh, and just lastly it remains me to say thank you so much again to George for a really interesting talk for encouraging us to look at uh, tidal barrage from from a different perspective and a very valuable perspective I think from uh, environmental protection and uh, this, the climate change perspective as well as uh, power generation and, and making money uh, point of view. So uh, just again, thank you again for a really, really interesting talk. And uh, on behalf of everybody else, yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for, for doing that today. Thank you. And, uh, and good night and safe travels if you're going home. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.